Good morning. I'm Betsy Zyko. I'm one of the performing arts members at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. So glad to welcome you today to our Paleo Puppet Meet and Greet. We'll be here for the next 30 minutes. I'm just here to get us settled in and introduce you to the host. And you can already see the puppet. Good morning. I'm Betsy Zyko. I'm so who is here? At the Natural History Museum. We have a whole team with us today. We can meet Eli and Jonathan today, but the rest of us are here to take your questions in the chat group and to monitor the program today and to share the slides. We love to have your question. That's right, you can chat with us today. Now we are all at home. So this virtual background, don't let it fool you. We're all at home and in the chat function, we can take your questions. We can see them, but the other people can't. And here's how you chat with us. Depending on your device, you'll see the chat function either in the upper right corner or in the lower middle, depending on whether you're on an iPad, a computer, a phone, or a Google Chromebook. If you're on YouTube, there is no interaction with children's programming. And we're gonna to try to get to everybody's questions today, but there's 300 of us here together. So we might not get to every question. And in that case, we love to hear from you. We will be sharing our email address at the end of the program. So we hope that you will jot down your questions. Also, if you're inspired to share your thoughts with us or maybe even draw a picture, if you start doodling during the program today, we wanna see what's going on and we love to hear from you. So now I want to introduce to you the host of today's program, Jonathan Williams. Hi, John. Hey, hello, everyone out there. Welcome to our Paleo Puppet meet and greet. Uh, so glad you could join us virtually. Um, thanks for running us down the chat features and all that. Um, you're not going to see the rest of your classmates here today. You're just going to see me, the puppet, uh, some other people maybe. So uh, depending on what device you're on, you might want to like go into gallery view to see the multiple angles or choose different things. We'll try to spotlight the things we think uh, will be of interest to you. But uh, with all that said, here we go. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to show you what we do and hopefully talk about how and why we do what we do. Let me introduce uh, our Paleo Puppet Pal uh, here on the other screen. This is the one and only Sauropodomorph A. We've got a vocab slide so you can see how that's spelled. It's a bit of a mouthful for me personally, and it's not the most kind of uh, descriptive name. Uh, for me anyway. Uh, part of the reason being is that the fossils that this dino puppet is based on, they were so recently discovered, the scientists haven't finished studying it to give it a proper name for the species. Um, it makes it a little hard to talk about. So what I wanted to try and do is hopefully uh, come up with a name for this uh, dino puppet right here. Um, and so if you want to pop uh, your suggestions into the chat, it can be male, female, gender neutral. It can be a silly made up name. I like making up names. I sometimes come up with silly stuff like Fluterban or whatnot. So go ahead and type in your suggestions into the chat and uh, Betsy's going to pop in and tell me some good ones when she sees them. Um, just so you know, this is a very uh, young example of what a sauropodomorph would look like. This puppet is about the size of a, a one or two year old. The fossils that it was based on uh, were of a a juvenile, maybe five years old. Um, I don't know if that helps you give it uh, a name. I saw some ones, Lola, Paul, <laughs> Jake, a baby, life. Do um, you see any good ones, Betsy, you wanna suggest? I don't know if we're having trouble. Betsy, I can't hear you if you're talking to me. I am here, can you hear me now? Yes, now I can, thank you. Well, one of the questions we have is, why did the dinosaur go extinct? That's cool. Um, we're gonna get to questions in a little bit. I was hoping you could uh, send us some names that you've seen. I am seeing. I am here, can you hear me now? Yes, now I can, thank you. Well, one of the questions we have is, why did the dinosaur All right. go extinct? I we saw Jeff. We have yeah. Rainbow Dash, Bob. Okay, Bob's pretty Alexa. good. Alexa. Let's, let's go with Dino Bob. Justin, uh, Dino Pup. Yeah, Dino Bob is what I'm gonna call it. If, if you have a name that you'd like to uh, call it, 
for yourself and your experience, wherever you are, go ahead and call it that. I'm just going to refer to this dinosaur as Dino Bob from now on uh, for the rest of this um, presentation, so to speak. So I mentioned that Dino Bob's fossils here were recently discovered. And so I wanted to do a quick poll to see what, where you think these fossils of, of Dino Bob were discovered and specifically on which continent of the earth. Um, so we're gonna set up a poll and I'll give you some, some context. There are fossil digs for dinosaurs happening on every continent on earth. So it could be any one of these continents. Some dinosaurs are found on multiple continents. Some are only found on one specifically, for instance, T-Rex. If you're looking for a T-Rex fossil, you are, that is a specifically North American dinosaur. That is the only place we have found those fossils. Other dinosaurs might be on multiple ones, like I said. Uh, I will give you a misleading hint in that uh, we chose the color uh, green for Dino Bob, not because we know its skin was green, but because there were other fossil evidence that uh, was found uh, in, in the same continent as Bob, Dino Bob that showed that it was a lush green place, uh, uh, that the, the trees and plants changed with the seasons. Maybe it was kind of swampy. Um, so we thought the green might be a color that would be helpful to blend in. So it's a, it's a bit of an educated guess there. Again, we don't know for sure. That's a little clue. Um, so I think uh, we've got a good amount of time here. Go ahead and put in your guesses on which kind. There's no consequences. This is not a grade. It's just for fun. Um, and when we are ready, Betsy, go ahead and show us the results. I wonder how far you had to journey, Dino Bob. So it looks like there's a lot of North America and some South America. Uh, and then Africa and Australia are pretty tied. And then yeah, they should be showing right now. It looks like most people said North America. Yep. All right. I think we can close that out and I will give you the, uh, the answer. So, all right. It turns out the fossils where Dino Bob, <laughs> where Dino Bob was found were on the continent of Antarctica. <laughs> Antarctica. That's how you spell it. But yeah, the cold, icy place with penguins. <laughs> that is where Dino Bob... <laughs> Oh, it's getting really hungry. All right. Well, we have a picture here of this is base camp of uh, of the excavation team. You can see there's a bunch of tents there. It's in the icy part of Antarctica. This isn't where they were actually excavating, though. They actually had to travel a little ways to get to where they were excavating. We're going to show that slide right there. They had to take a helicopter and you'll see they're up in the mountains now and they're up amongst the rocks. Um, that ice has melted away that was covering the mountains and rocks before, um, unfortunately, due to climate change. So the only silver lining we have for that is that it revealed the fossils underneath. You can see them working there on the hills, and then there are the fossils in the rocks right there. Um, and now, if you were surprised to find out that this dinosaur's fossils were found in Antarctica, you're not alone. I was very surprised, too. I was very surprised to find out that there were um, dinosaur excavations going on in Antarctica at all. Um, but did you know that there are actually still dinosaurs in Antarctica today, technically speaking, based on how uh, paleontologists define a dinosaur? Yes, we have a picture here. Ye these are some Antarctic dinosaurs. You may recognize them as penguins, but paleontologists today consider birds, all modern day birds, to be the uh, modern day descendants and ancestors of the dinosaurs and are themselves specifically theropod dinosaurs. Now, you might be wondering, how is it possible that Antarctica was so different? How was it green or, or lush or swampy, or maybe you just think I'm a lot. Well, I'll just tell you what the uh, scientists told me in all the trainings is that uh, the reason Antarctica's climate was so different is because Antarctica was not where it is today. It was not at the South Pole yet. Uh, you may or may not be uh, familiar with the idea of Pangaea. That's the idea of all the continents millions of years ago were all smushed into one big supercontinent. And then over millions and millions of years, uh, through plate tectonics and things like that, they slowly uh, broke apart and, and drifted to where they are today. Um, now, 
at during their <laughs> their journey 190 million years ago in the late Jurassic, which is when Dino Bob would have been uh, roaming the Earth, Antarctica was a little bit further north, uh, and so it wasn't exactly hot. It wasn't it wasn't tropical. It wasn't in the middle of the uh, of the planet there, um, but it was certainly warmer than Antarctica, and so again a kind of lush green swampy place. This is a, a picture from the Antarctic Dinosaurs exhibit um, that uh, that was one of the reasons we, we built Dinobob was to help sort of uh, spread the word and get people excited about our Antarctic Dinosaurs exhibit. That's a different model of a sauropodomorph A, a Dinobob, and the picture of the background of what that environment what it might have been like. I mentioned before climate change. So the climate changing from Antarctica being further north to where it is today on the South Pole took millions of years. And the climate changing today is just within the span of our human lifetime. So it's a much shorter period of time. And it's very, uh, very different, very unfortunate. I'm sure we've all heard all about a lot of the impacts of climate change. So studying these differences of how the climate changes can help us even today, hopefully figure out uh, and get more information on what we can do uh, right now, hopefully. Excellent, so that is sort of the, uh, the end of our formal presentation. But what I wanna do now, um, I want to first introduce the puppeteer bringing uh, Dino Bob to life. I'm gonna take off my, dino, my, uh, my virtual background. Uh, this is my coworker, Eli, and we are also roommates Hello, everyone. <laughs> so we do not wear masks in this house uh, while we're here. We do when we go out. But I also wanted to take a, a minute um, to see if Betsy, if you could do a shout out so we can uh, hear some of the schools that are with us today. Sure thing. We have some we have 12 schools with us today. We've got 24th Street Elementary, Henninger, Topanga Elementary, 32nd Street, Topanga Charter. We have Coeur d'Alene, Iliad. Harold Bishop Elementary, and there are 300 students from these schools today. Awesome, that's so good that they're all here. Uh, we are going to open it up for questions uh, that you've been popping into the chat. So uh, when you find something you wanna start with, Betsy, uh, lay it on us and we'll-, we'll I'm gonna start and, uh, with puppet questions because there's a lot of questions, details. How was the puppet made? What exactly are the parts? Step one, two, three to get that puppet. Excellent. Eli, take it away. Hi, all right. So uh, this puppet right here is a puppet that we call, the style of puppet is called the marionette. Uh, it's a puppet operated by strings. You can see those strings. It was built uh, by a puppeteer named Robin Walsh that we work with at the museum. Uh, we have a few slides that we can show in terms of the construction of the puppet. Uh, but what Robin would have started with to make this puppet is first she would have done some drawings. Uh, she spoke to paleontologists at the museum and started getting an idea of what exactly that, uh, that th this creature should look like, uh, then worked with them and would uh, then have gone on to uh, sketch, as I say, out an idea. You can see that in the slide, hopefully. Uh, next, she would have worked on making a maquette, a model of that puppet to get a sense of the size, uh, how big the controller was gonna be, all of those sorts of things. And you can see that in this first case, she made that just out of foam board, uh, just to get an idea of the basic movements. But you can already see a lot of this puppet shaping up in that design. After that, she would have started working on sculpting the puppet. Uh, and she would have done that, uh, in this case, using uh, modeling clay, a uh, type of clay that doesn't dry, so you can keep on working on it. And then, and you can see the similarities already. If you look at the puppet as it is and the sculpture, you can see how close they are. And then finally, she would have done details covering in fabric and uh, doing smaller details like these teeth that you can see inside the mouth right there. And then finally, we would have strung it and added it to a controller. If you can see on my screen with John, I guess John's screen, it might be hard to see against the black backdrop, but these are uh, the controls that I'm using to operate the puppet. So I have two of them. This one over here with, that I'm moving with my hand right here, this is what controls the body of the puppet, the legs, and the tail. Over here, in my other hand, this is the controller that I'm using to make the head move and get the jaw working. And there's a little hinged piece right here. That's what I'm using to get that mouth to open and close. Uh, uh, thanks for the question. What's our next one? 
So we have some questions about uh, the dinosaurs. Why did they go extinct and from Stella? And Zoe wants to know, she thought they had feathers. Excellent. That? Stella, Zoe, excellent. Thank you for asking. Um, dinosaurs, depending on which ones they were, they went extinct at different times. For example, Stegosaurus probably went extinct long before T-Rex was around. We are closer in time as humans to T-Rex than Stegosaurus was. But in terms of the mass extinction event that, that, um, that led to the extinction of all those, those huge big dinosaurs, um, it's not necessarily one cause, but there was one big cause that started sort of like a, a domino effect, a chain reaction. And that would be the, uh, the meteor that crashed into the earth around um, the peninsula of the, of the Gulf Coast in, near Mexico that would have changed the environment significantly um, and changed the amount of food available, sunlight, a bunch of things that would have had um, a, a devastating effect uh, on, on the whole planet and lots of different species. Um, but that wouldn't have been necessarily um, instantaneous for for everything on the planet uh, of every dinosaur just going extinct as soon as it hit, it would have taken some time. Um, so yeah, that's what I got for you in terms of that. And then the feathers, the feathers, right. So some dinosaurs had feathers. It's mostly a group called theropods. So things like, like a T-Rex maybe, or a velociraptor, things like that. Uh, it's, uh, it can be difficult to find the evidence of feathers, like a skin imprint fossil is a very rare fossil to find. There has to be certain ge geology uh, present and factors for when it's fossilizing to do that. Sauropodomorph A, Dino Bob here, is um, a sauropod, sauropodomorph type of dinosaur. And we, we have not found evidence of feathers with that that I know of, um, but I don't know everything. But yeah, so some had feathers. Just not all of them. Yeah. What else we got? So Dino Bob, uh, there's some Dino Bob questions. Franco wants to know, were there other Dino Bobs in other places in the world? Uh, yes, probably. I don't know for sure. Like you said, this, this may and probably is a new species that they're identifying. So um, if it's a new species, it would have been the first type, uh, first species of this one discovered. So we only know of it existing in um, Antarctica <laughs> for now, um, but as a broader group of sauropods, of long neck dinosaurs and things like that, those types of dinosaurs um, would have been in lots of places. You know, I mentioned like T-Rex only, uh, we only find fossils of T-Rex in North America, uh, but T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus rex is part of the Tyrannosaur group. And there are other Tyrannosaurs uh, that are on different continents as well. So if you look at a larger group, they would have been more spread out, specifically Sauropodomorphae dinobob. Right now, we only know of its existence in Antarctica. So what other dinosaurs would have been around with, with Bob? How big would actual Bob have gotten? Not puppet Bob, but actual Bob. Actual and Bob. is a lizard a dinosaur? Um, I don't, okay, so. Let me, let me try and answer this. Is a lizard a dinosaur? I think uh, lizards, reptiles in general, are close relatives uh, or ancestors of dinosaurs. I do not think that they are considered dinosaurs themselves the way that modern day birds are considered dinosaurs. Um, what other dinosaurs might have been around with Dino Bob, right? That was one of the questions. So um, lots of other ones. Uh, so. We mentioned that Dino, uh, Dino, Dino Bob's uh, temporary name is Sauropodomorph A. There would have been a Sauropodomorph B. There's another sor uh, sauropod long neck creature called Glacialosaurus. There might have been, uh, not might have been, there was a, um, uh, a predator, a theropod type dinosaur called Cryolophosaurus. Uh, and there would have been other, not technically dinosaurs, if you're talking to certain paleontologists, they will say that. Uh, Flying reptiles, pterosaurs, things like a pterodactyl, those would have been around. There would have been marine reptiles uh, living in the waters and the seas around there. Uh, so there would have been lots and lots of uh, friends and enemies alike uh, in Dino Bob's time, just like nature today. So Daphne and Farrah want to know what does Bob eat? What does Bob eat? Daphne Farah, good question. 
you see Dino Bob chomping down on these ferns uh, right here that we have there. That is an expression of what we think Dino Bob would have eaten, would be the leafy green fern like uh, trees and plants that would have been growing at the time of the late Jurassic 190 million years ago. Part of the way they tell that is by looking at the teeth. And in fact, for uh, the group of dinosaurs called sauropodomorphs, um, one of their defining characteristics as paleontologists ha have defined that is the shape of their teeth, which are a little bit leaf-like actually. Um, that's one of the ways they um, classify a sauropodomorph. Now there's another fossil in general, if you wanna look at uh, for what a dinosaur might have eaten and that is called coprolite. Um, and if you don't know, some of you might, coprolite is the technical term for fossilized dino poop. Yeah, so there are paleontologists that will crack open some coprolite. It's not stinky or smelly or anything else. It's mineralized. It's basically a rock that is in the shape <laughs> of that dino poop. Uh, but they can see what's inside and see if there are plants or seeds inside there or if there are meat and bones from predatory, uh, from predatory behavior of other things like that. And so with the teeth and the coprolite, you can get a good sense of what some dinosaurs may have been eating. Nice, nice. Mia wants to know, was there an ice age and was this near the ice age in time? Uh, so not at the time of Dino Bob, no. But the Ice Age, in terms of geologic time, is much closer to us. So everything that happens over at the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, right there on Wilshire, all of that is from the Ice Age. Saber-toothed cats and the big Colombian mammoths and things like that. Those are about, those are only tens of thousands of years ago in terms of uh, geologic time as compared to Dino Bob here was living in the late Jurassic period, and that was 190 million years ago. So very different times, uh, very different environments and such as well. During the time that Dino Bob was alive, um, the area that is Los Angeles and Southern California was probably underwater. Um, so it would have been very different there. Do we have some more puppet curious friends here wanting to know exactly how big that puppet is. Can you show us any size oh, sure. comparison? So, uh, I'll put my hand here. This is my hand. I'll put my hand in Dino Bob's screen so you can see this is uh, a sort of comparison. Dino Bob is the size of a, a very a small dog or a large house cat right now. Um, so yeah, that's about how, the, how big this, this puppet is that is uh, about a one or two year old representation of this species. Yeah. Layla wants to know why the actual dinosaurs got so big and why this one wasn't as big as the others. Um, so in the sort of evolutionary history of the long neck dinosaurs like Dino Bob here, Dino Bob was one of the first. And so Dino Bob, um, when it was full grown probably would have been the size of like a very large dog. But over time, they just got bigger and bigger because they could basically, um, based on the resources at hand there in terms of this group of long neck dinosaurs. Um, you know, like when we're asking how come they got so big, that's kind of like asking, how come Eli's so much taller than me? Well, I don't know, Eli's parents were probably taller and his ancestors were taller than, than, than me and mine for whatever reason, right? Um, so that's kind of how it went, you know? It, they, they passed on uh, their genes and they get big, getting bigger and bigger and they kept surviving, and, you know, and, that, and they got big. That's, that's as much as I really know, unfortunately. Great, great. <laughs> Freda wants to know, um, is it hard to find a fossil for Dino Bob? And basically, what do fossils look like? Okay. Um, can we go back to that Antarctic slide with the hammer and the fossil there? Or, well, this is, this is another thing too. This is good. This is a... A different example. So when they were finding uh, the fossils in Antarctica, they, um, they uh, will just take a big section of rock where they think most of it is. And they didn't necessarily excavate that all out of it in Antarctica. They would bring it back to the museum, try to chisel it out. 
what we're seeing here is actually um, from a CT scan of that rock. So they didn't actually excavate it out yet and chip it out. It was just sort of like a, a, a more advanced technology of similar to an X-ray maybe or a CAT scan, uh, things like that to look inside the rock. And they would create a 3D model of that. And then this is a 3D printed version of the fossil that has been encased in the rock that they're still going to excavate. In terms of finding fossils, I don't have a lot of experience with that myself. I know our, our friend chat helper, Brian, he's been on uh, excavations and fossil digs um, here in America. And there are different colors you look for. There are different sort of geological formations you look for, but that's as much detail as I can personally give you about that right now. And then this is the picture of like fossils in the rock in Antarctica. So that's what some fossils will look like. That's an example of what a fossil looks like. I hope that answered your question. I hope that it piqued your curiosity to maybe find out more on your own. Um, what's, what's happening next? Okay, we have time to answer the final question, which is a good segue to finish the program. What exactly do puppeteers do at the Natural History Museum? Oh my goodness. And how can they get in touch? Oh, we've, we, we do lots and lots of things. We got some slides here to show the different things that we do. So when we're not in quarantine working from home, we have live shows and this is an example of that. We have a big, huge uh, Triceratops puppet that will be life-size for what a five or six year old Triceratops might've looked like. That puppet is one that I would fully crawl inside myself and wear and bring to life like that and make sounds and roar and stuff. It's very exciting. Um, we have other marionettes. These are some squirrels also made by the same puppeteer, Robin. This is me and Eli at one of our nature fests, I believe. Uh, we've got uh, costumes of a butterfly on stilts uh, that we'll do for bug fair and nature fest and special things like that. That's pretty fun. And what else do we have? We've got, oh, we've got lots of shadow puppets. We'll make our own shows that we do. And Eli often, uh, as well as many other people, <clears throat> on the team past and present have done workshops with students like yourselves for them to make their own shadow puppet performances based on things, exhibits uh, that they have seen in the museum and what's going on in their own lives. And uh, we have a T-Rex too, who we do shows with, but we also do um, special events like weddings, uh, like this handsome couple here. Uh, so we have a lot of fun. Um, young people like dinosaurs, old people like dinosaurs, because dinosaurs are very likable, in, in my opinion. Uh, so I hope uh, you enjoyed your time here with us. I hope it was somewhat informative. I hope it piqued your curiosity. Um, if you are taking any drawings or writing anything, or if you want to try to make your own sort of dino puppet uh, experience, we have a DIY shadow puppet project uh, that's on our website. It was recently, recently featured in the New York Times even. Um, so you can give that a shot. And if you um, want to have maybe your teachers or someone send us uh, your work, we love seeing that. It's really cool um, to see what you all get up to. Uh, it helps us out a lot. And yeah, that's what we got for you. You can tag us online too, on the social medias if you're into that. Uh, so I guess we're going to say bye for now. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.